Hi everyone! In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to draw a warrior troll. We'll use the second body type we learned, the large ball shape. You'll see that with a few fun tips and tricks, we can achieve a really interesting character. So let's go! First, create a layer where you're going to draw your sketches. The brush I'll use is number 36, but with a few adjustments. You can see the properties of this brush here if you want to copy it yourself. This brush gives me a similar stroke to a pencil because of its low opacity and texture. Use it if you find it interesting. Otherwise, try out other brushes or make your own. So the first thing we'll do is a brainstorm to select the pose we want our character to be in. A brainstorm is a process where we draw lots of ideas to then select the ones we find most interesting or the ones we like the best. Don't worry if you don't like all the ideas you have. You usually end up with only one or two. Try out different poses, combining the positions of the arms and the legs. It's important the visual weights work so your character looks attractive. There's a big difference between a balanced pose and one that's not. The ones that aren't very balanced might look robotic or chaotic. When you're done, select your favourite pose and go to a new layer to work on it. I prefer to work on top of my sketch. I like that it contains the essence of my first strokes. You could draw the pose again in large if you like, but maybe my method makes it easier for you. On a new layer, we can start to draw and define the basic anatomy of our character. As this is a female, I need to draw the chest so we can clearly identify it. When I sketch the face, I'll define the features so they look more feminine as I'm not going to modify the hips. We need to make these adjustments so we can differentiate it from a male character. Otherwise, it might look too ambiguous. I'll start sketching the basic anatomical structures. I'll focus on the basic geometric shapes and how they're placed in perspective. If it helps, draw the basic shapes from each angle and then add them to the character. The legs are looking a bit static, so I'm going to modify the pose and direction of these until I get something that I like. Remember to mark the direction the hips and legs are going by correctly placing the knee and the foot. Observe yourself in the mirror if you're unsure about how the pose works. Sometimes we draw poses that we think are correct, and when we try to simulate them, we realise they're impossible or really difficult to do. Bear this in mind because the viewer will easily see if there's something wrong in your drawing. So the same problem I had with the legs, I now have with the arm. I want the pose to be more dynamic, so I'm going to place the arm upwards, and later I'll give her a weapon to hold. Try and make these corrections in the sketching phase if you can. With horizontal and vertical lines that follow the directions of the shapes, we'll mark the orientation of each of the elements. For example, the belly and the face. You need to draw all the face lines so we know in which direction our character is looking. The pose can change a lot with these small details. Now on a new layer, we'll continue defining the muscles and anatomy of our troll. At the moment, we're not going to draw the clothes so we can adjust it later to the shape of the body. Remember to use references like photos, models, illustrations or yourself if you're not sure about the anatomy. Looking at other artists is always good. To master something, we need to know how others have solved it first. So I'll quickly sketch the facial features of our troll. We'll give her a severe expression as we're drawing a warrior, so a friendly smile won't really help to define our character. I'll also give her a wild hairstyle. Everything you draw should tell something about the character's story, their background or personality. A trick for drawing strong or brutish characters is that you draw very large forearms and wrists a similar size to the hand instead of slimming them down. This has more of a visual impact.
On a new layer, we can start to add the costume to our warrior. Bear in mind that the lines for the clothes must follow the same directions as the shapes inside the body so everything looks coherent. Pay attention to the creases and perspective of the clothes. Everything needs to be in its proper place. Another trick when drawing is to use a constant contrast of straight lines and curves. This resource can be very attractive in your drawings. See how I draw curved lines followed by straight ones. It's a good way to enrich your design and add some variety, so try it out yourself. It's important to use references when drawing clothes. Depending on the theme, you could use movies, illustrations, or history books. I like to observe movies and video games to find inspiration for this type of costume. Also, I sometimes take photos in museums that I use later for my illustrations. It's good to always have fresh ideas and experiment with different shapes and materials. If you decide to draw a weapon, like me, be careful with the perspective so you can understand what angle we're seeing it from and what volume it has. Also, the contact of the hand and the weapon has to make sense. There needs to be balance so we don't make things up with our eyes. Sometimes you might need to adjust some areas that you're not sure about in the drawing and the composition. You can select these areas with the lasso tool and rotate them or change their position. This trick is very useful for adjusting the areas we need to balance out. You can redraw elements if you need to. I, for example, am going to redraw the legs as I want them to look more dynamic. Then I get a nice contrapposto that adds movement to the whole character. When you're feeling stuck or you're just not sure about certain areas, change or redraw them, even if that means going back a step. When you need to, or when you're stuck, flip the canvas horizontally to see the mistakes you might have made. We might not notice these small mistakes until we see our drawings from a different angle. You could also use a mirror or someone else's opinion, but if you're using a software, then the easiest thing is to flip it. Correct the things you think are necessary and then flip it back to continue drawing. This way, you make sure your character works from every angle. Create a new layer and lower the opacity. This is where we're going to define our drawing. Pay attention to the shapes and perspective of the objects and the clothes. It's important that everything has its volume and this is expressed logically in the space so it doesn't look too flat. When you're drawing thicker materials, you need to think about the space they occupy and respect that in your drawing.
Once again, we'll go over the drawing on a new layer and we'll carry on with the props and the clothing. We can add volume and details to each part as long as we respect the basic structure. Try to overload or to simplify some areas to see the different effects and see if you like the results. Something that's interesting to consider is the texture of the materials. Playing around with different textures and applying the appropriate strokes for each one will give us great visual effects for our character. Look at different materials you could use for your character's costume. Later, if you're going to apply colour, you can emphasise the textures with your brush. But right now, we'll try to get the effect with the pencil strokes. There are lots of examples of textures you could use. Leather, fur, cloth, metal, stone, bone. Look for references to help. Around the axe, I'm going to draw some small lines or rays to give it a magical feel. Little details like this just add to the illustration. Drawing magical elements is nice, but it has its tricks too. Every element, whether that be a ray, fire, ice, or anything else, is like working with texture, only subtler. Here, we can play around with the lines and loose strokes. Have a look at how other artists represent these kinds of elements. On the outside of the character, I'd like to add some thickness to the line to just visually strengthen my drawing.
Finally, I'm going to select the axe with the lasso tool to make it bigger. I want our warrior to look more exaggerated and even more severe, so a larger weapon will help. Readjust the axe until it's the size and position you want. You can do this with different elements in your drawings to see what sizes best adjust to your composition. And these effects could be very varied. To finish up, I'm going to make a final composition. So I'm going to apply background to this composition that's similar to an old piece of paper, and I'll change the colour of the line to simulate a sanguine stroke. To do this, I'll select an oak tone and I'll paint on a layer underneath our work layer. Then I'll readjust the composition and size of the character so it has space on the canvas. I'll change the colour of the line. Press Ctrl U and in the new window select the option to colour the line and adjust the saturation and luminosity to make the tone a darker red. Then select a brush with an effect and paint loose strokes over the canvas to add textures and stains. You can find these types of brushes online or you can make your own by scanning textures or drawing them previously. I'll then use this background as my base for the other characters we'll draw in the following lessons. And so our troll is finished. Now you know the techniques and you can draw the large body type, we'll move on to the next lesson where we'll draw a character using the pear-shaped body. So I'll see you there.